Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll revisit the concept of initialization parameters that we saw in the servlets tutorial and we'll see how it applies to JSPs. Uh, we learned that we can initialize parameters on a servlet to servlet basis by using the web.xml or by using annotations and uh, specifying the parameter name and value in the init param uh, annotation or uh, the XML node. Now we'll have a look at how we do the same thing in a JSP file. It's very similar, but there are a few differences that we need to note. In this tutorial, we'll also do something that we didn't do in our sublet tutorial. We're going to override the init method. Yes, since the JSP is eventually uh, going to get converted to a servlet, it's going to have an init method. So now if you have to override the init method on a servlet, you just override the init and uh, we have two signatures. One is with the servlet config as a parameter and one is without any parameters. You can just override it in your servlet class and that will do the trick. But uh, how would you do that in a JSP? So we'll answer these two questions by uh, creating a JSP which takes init parameters and also initializes them in an overridden init method. So let's get started. I will use the same project, but I'll open a new JSP page. I'll create a new page, new JSP file, I'll create it in the web content, and I'll call it init page dot JSP. Okay, so we have a blank template. Uh, now what we're going to do is we will configure init parameters for this. The use case that I have is that I will have a default user name and uh, if the user does not pass any attributes or any parameters to the request then we show the default user name. But uh, if the user passes a value in the request uh, parameter then we show the you know the value that the user has passed. So let's let's configure the username in it parameter for this page. Let me save this so that we have the file here. In order to do that, we need to update the web.xml. It is similar to a servlet configuration inside the web.xml. In a servlet configuration, what would we do? We would have a servlet node. And uh, inside the servlet node, we would have a servlet name and a servlet class. Now here I do not have a servlet class name as such because I have a JSP and uh, I cannot really depend on Tomcat giving the proper name for uh, the servlet. Earlier we saw it was the JSP name underscore JSP as the servlet class name but we, are, we cannot be sure about that. If you put this in a different container it might have a different name. So what we do here is we do not specify the servlet class node. Instead we specify a node called JSP file and this JSP file node will contain the path to the JSP itself. So here it will be init page dot JSP. So what this is telling Tomcat is that this is actually a JSP page and I don't know the servlet name so I'm just going to provide the JSP name here and now you Tomcat has to decide what is the J you know the, what is the servlet that's generated out of this JSP and then map this servlet name to that generated servlet. Okay so now we have defined the servlet you know defining the init param is same as how we would do it in a servlet so I'll just say init param and here I can give param name param value sets. So I'll just have one here param name. I'll call this default user and the param value will be default username.
and there you go we have defined the servlet now for every servlet there has to be a servlet mapping now what would be the servlet mapping here now let's say i i create let's say I create a servlet mapping node here now i can give the servlet name which is same as uh, the servlet name here but what would be the servlet mapping? What would be the URL pattern? Well, the URL pattern would be the path of the JSP itself because whenever the JSP is accessed, we would want this kind of configuration to happen. And uh, we know that the URL by default is the JSP URL itself. So I'll just say in a page dot JSP. and save. So now what we have done is we have configured a JSP file as a servlet and we have given in it param. So all we need is the servlet node in order to specify our init parameter. So now that we have defined it as a servlet and given it a name, we can configure as many init params as we want. So this is how you would configure an init param for a JSP. Now that we have done this here, we will have that init param available here in the servlet config. Now accessing this value inside our script tag is fairly simple. Um, I'll just open a new script block here. Okay, since we know that this is inside a JSP service method, uh, I can access the get servlet config. So I'll just say get servlet config dot now I have the servlet config object now to, the way to access an init param is to use the get init parameter now I just pass the string here and it will get the value that we have defined now what's the value we have over here we have default user so I'll pass the same string and that's it now let me just print this I don't even need to assign it to anything Just add some text here. The default user from the servlet config is get servlet config, which gets the config for this servlet, and get init parameter, which gets this init parameter, and of course the parameter that we are actually looking for, which will fetch the value for this parameter, which is a default username. Now let's run this and make sure we get the value right. There you go, we have the default username. Now there's one more thing that we'll do, as we discussed before, we will try to override the init method. Now let's say I want this inside a session object or inside uh, the uh, you know the application context object and I want to do this before we actually run the service method. I want this uh, value to be available in the session or in the servlet context before we actually make the call to the JSP service. So in order to do that I will have to override the init method. Now what is the name of the init method here? We saw that it was JSP init. Let's open up uh, the Tomcat source that's been generated for this JSP. This is the init page dot Java. So you can see here there is a underscore JSP init, which is the method. Now we can override this method by implementing a JSP init method in our JSP page. So let's do that. In order to implement a method, of course, we saw this earlier, we need to have a definition tag, we cannot have a script block. So I will say script and then exclamation point, I will have a method definition here. 
public y jsp init now first let me get the sublet config and the value again like we did here Okay, so now I'm getting the servlet config object here and I'm getting the init parameter of that servlet config object here. So it is, I've combined those two into one statement. I'm setting it into the default user string. Now I can get the servlet context or the session by using the corresponding syntax that we would use inside a, inside a, you know, in a, inside a servlet. So let me get the servlet context here. Servlet context context equals get servlet context. Now I'm getting the servlet context from oops servlet. Yeah. So I'm getting the servlet context object from this servlet itself, which is the converted JSP class. Now I can use this context object to set attribute. Set attribute. Now I can pass a string. Default user and this string that we have captured from the sublet config. That should do it. Now I will also print the value here. Value in the sublet context is okay I will have to get the sublet context here I cannot use the this value because it's its scope is restricted to this JSP in it so I'll use the same thing here I'll use the get sublet context dot get attribute and I need to pass the same attribute that we are setting here which is default user save this and run this well there you go we have uh, the value in the sublet config transferred to the sublet context and since this is happening on the init which is the first method to run when this object is initialized so we make sure that the servlet context always has this value it is uh, the attribute of this default user has been set while the servlet object is initialized so we know for sure that this is available in any method that we implement so uh, so this is one thing that uh, we need to be clear about, which is uh, the difference between a servlet config and a servlet context. This is something that uh, confused me a lot when I was learning, and I know it confuses a lot of people as well. The servlet config is something that uh, Tomcat passes to us um, on the creation of the servlet object. So what it does is it checks the you know, the, our init parameters in the web.xml and whatever configuration parameters we have set there, Tomcat bundles them into an object called the servlet config and it passes it to our init method. And it's available for us in the servlet as a member variable called the servlet config. Now the servlet context is actually, uh, you know, we saw another name for it, which is the application context, which is probably a better name, is a scoped object, just like we have a request and a session. It's a scoped object that's applicable across the application, just like a request is applicable only for a particular request, and a session is applicable only for a particular user session. A uh, servlet context object or an application context object is available across the application. So hope this difference is clear. Uh, I'll see you in the next tutorials.